Welcome to the Rent to Rent Success Podcast, the only podcast entirely dedicated to helping you achieve rent to rent success. We talk about the ethical way to get you started in property without buying it. This is our place to inspire each other to believe bigger, to be bolder, and to be game changers for good. Property investors and sisters Stephanie and Nikki Taylor are your guides on this exciting ride. Let's start up the engines and get ready to fly. Hello, hello, hello. It's Stephanie here and welcome to episode 24 of Ask the Angels, where we answer your rent to rent questions. If you have a question that you'd love to get answered, go to renttorentsuccess.com slash ask, A-S-K, and record your question there for me to answer for you. Today, we have a question from Jenny, and it's all about the important topic of negotiation. Here's Jenny's question. She says, I don't feel confident negotiating with landlords and agents. What advice can you give me? that'll help me get better deals. I feel like I end up giving everything away and end up in a position where where the deal will lose money if I accept it. Great question, because you want to feel good when you get a deal, that you know it's going to work for you, you know it's going to work for them. It needs to be a win-win, and the negotiation skills are going to help you get there. I can totally relate to what Jenny's thinking and what she's saying. I was not a good negotiator. I didn't have a lot of experience with um, negotiating and my skills have developed over the years as we've gained more knowledge and more experience. And today I'm going to talk about the three underused negotiation tips that will really help you succeed because Developing your negotiation skills can feel a little bit overwhelming. There's so much to learn. There's so many things you can do. But these three on their own will make a huge difference. So I know that you'll get a lot out of this. And these, I've taken these from our book, Rent to Rent Success. Um, So, um, and these ideas of about negotiation come from the best book that I know of on the topic of negotiation. It's Never Split the Difference, excuse me, Never Split the Difference, Negotiating as if your life depended on it, because it kind of does. And it's by a former FBI hostage hostage negotiator, Chris Voss. This book changed my thinking and my outcomes, and it can do the same for you. We'll put the link in the podcast notes. Now, negotiation is important for every single part of your life. The life that you've created, the life that you're living today, is all about the your negotiations of yesterday, the job that you have, the business that you have, the family that you have. Um, well, the family, if you're, I mean, the family you create, not the family you were born into, are all a result of your negotiation skills and what you're able to create in the world. So these three tips will help you up level. And they're really simple too. Tip one is reflect back reflect back. And what I mean by that is Voss talks about the concept of mirroring. Hard word to say, (laughs) mirroring. This is where you repeat the last three words or the important few words that someone has just said. Similarity is so comforting to us as humans. One study found that waiters got a 70% higher tip when they practiced mirroring than when they used positive reinforcement. So they got more tip when they practiced repeating the words exactly or repeating a few of the words exactly than when they were just being generally complimentary. Mirroring activates empathy and bonding. So mastering this one step will help you learn more than anyone else in any given situation. And knowing more 
will reveal to you how to pitch your offer more effectively to solve the other person's needs. And these needs are often not what you assume. So work hard not to assume. Mirror mirror what people say. So that's tip one, reflect back. Tip two is point out the problems. So often landlords or agents may have vague feelings of uncertainty that they can't put their finger on, but these will stop them from moving forward with you. Bringing up these problems and talking about them actually makes the problem seem smaller and less worrying. It's so counterintuitive, but it works. As or as Voss calls it, don't feel their pain, label their pain. Labeling, this pointing out of the problems, is a way of acknowledging someone's feelings. And usually we only do this for people we know well. So it deepens that feeling of intimacy between you. The skill is in spotting the feelings or anxieties that are not being discussed. I must say, I was skeptical about this one and felt self-conscious about using it. I wondered if it was a manipulation. But what I found is it's simple, effective, and actually it does make you feel more connected to the other person. So it feels good as well. It's something you're using to understand more deeply. It makes your communications more honest. And for it, you'd use phrases like this. It seems like you're worried that I won't pay the rent like your previous tenant. It looks like you still have some concerns about going ahead. Or it sounds like you're not happy with the, fr- with the rent offer I made. Be comfortable allowing silence here for a, re- a reply. Often people will have to think about why they feel unsure. They may not have fully concern, fully voiced their concerns before, even to themselves. And that's why this is so powerful. You're giving them the opportunity to actually discuss some of these things, which might have caused them to say no without even thinking about them. So tip three is ask calibrated questions. When someone answers a question, delve deeper so that you can fully understand their concerns and their thinking. Ask the right questions. Voss describes calibrated questions where you invite the other person to tell you what the problem is rather than causing conflict by telling them what the problem is. Here are some examples. It's all about not assuming. So an example might be, how can I make this better? How would you like me to proceed? How can we solve this problem? Calibrated questions make the other person feel like they're more listened, sorry, feel like they're more listened to and feel like they're more in control. So that that's the three tips. And I want to leave you with another three final thoughts about this. And these three are simplicity. That's number one. Leave the door open and follow up. So simplicity. This simplicity is your friend. Our brains do not like confusion. We do not like having to work things out because it feels like it takes too much energy. And as the well-known marketing saying goes, a confused mind never buys. There are lots of different ways to structure a deal. We find it best to offer the landlord or agent two ways based on the information you've learned from them and their wants and their needs. So give them two options. Don't give too many options. Secondly, in all your negotiations, leave the door open. We've had a number of occasions where landlords have originally turned us down saying our offer was too low and came back to us years later after really looking at their costs and seeing that our rent was actually better than they were receiving after paying all of the costs. Finally, always follow up. 
it's so important to follow up with all your landlords and agents. Use a system that helps you to do that. There's no need to wait until you're in, um, negotiating your first rent-to-rent deals to begin improving your negotiation skills. Try implementing some of these strategies when negotiating simple things, such as household chores with your family. Role play rent to rent scenarios too. We've noticed in Kickstarter that role play makes a huge difference. Role playing helps you settle your mind, it helps you build your confidence, and it shows you what you know. And that is often much more than you thought. So, in summary, there are a few simple techniques you can develop which will next level your negotiating skills. These skills will give you deals that you actually want to do instead of deals that make you go, ugh. So you want deals that are a hell yeah, not deals that are, oh, I'm not sure if this is good anymore. And so I'm just going to summarize the three negotiation tips we talked about. We talked about reflect back. So summarize the important few words that someone says. It helps them feel really understood. Two, point out the problems. This deepens the intimacy between you. And also, it encourages people, the landlord or agent, to talk about what problems they see. And three, calibrated questions. This helps you to delve, delve deeper into people's thinking. Why do they think certain things, what has their experience been? And it really, finding out more will then help you to put your offer in a way that will solve uh, the issues that the landlord or the agent has. And remember, in all negotiations, the three things to always remember there are keep things simple. Make sure that what you're offering is really clear. Two, leave the door open. If it's not a yes immediately, make sure that you leave the door open so you can go back. And three, always follow up so that, so that again, if it's not a yes, that you do follow up. Most people don't follow up. And if you're in the Rent to Rent Kickstarter program with us, you'll have the deals about how to negotiate with landlords regarding the refurbishment and in incentivizing them to pay. And that is all in M5.4. So you can see all that information about all the different ways to, re to structure your deals for refurbishment um, that go along with this section, M5.4. So thank you so much for your question, Jenny. And if you'd like to, if you're listening and you'd like to find out more about the ethical way to make money from properties you don't own, get our free Rent to Rent Success Guide and Masterclass. It's a booklet and a 90-minute training video, and it gives you the full overview on how Rent to Rent works and to see whether it's right for you. That's all for now. I'll see you next time. Bye for now. Thank you so much for being with me here today. If you would like more, we've written the number one best-selling book on Rent to Rent. You can find it at rentstorentsuccess.com slash book. Reviewers on Amazon have described it as the best Red to Rent HMO book and also as a definitive reference guide and inspirational. Take your next step today and buy the book. You can find it at rent number two rentsuccess.com slash book. And I'll see you again next time. Until then, remember, believe bigger. Be bolder, be a game changer.